Today our Bible study will be from Daniel 9:24 to 27. It is entitled Jerusalem is the daughter Zion. Let us read the verses first, then we will ask God for God's guidance in prayer. Then we will have a verse by verse interpretation. We will be studying the New International Version and King James Version. But I will be reading from the NIV now, and when we have the verse-by-verse -verse interpretation, it will be from King James Version. Daniel 9, 24-27, NIV Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Know and understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto the anointed one, the ruler comes there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench but in times of trouble. After the sixty-two sevens, the anointed one will be put to death and will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city in the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolation have been decreed. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Let us pray, dear God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly come to your presence to seek your guidance and help in understanding the vision of Daniel about the 77. May you pour us the spirit of truth to whisper to our minds and heart the word of truth. We pray to accept your word from the Bible wholeheartedly and embrace the Holy Spirit fully with joy and gladness. May we find the real meaning to all these verses as we study each line. May you open our hearts and open our minds to the revelation of the truth as we go deeper in seeking your kingdom. Thy will be always done, dear God. In Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen. Daniel nine twenty four to 27 King James Version Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. In the NIV, it was seventy sevens. In the King James Version, sevens was translated into weeks. Therefore, 77 means 70 weeks. There are many misinterpretations that 77 means 70 times 7 years or 490 years. 77 is just directly 70 weeks. No more complicated or other meaning to it. 70 weeks is equal to 1 year and 4 months or 16 months or 490 days. It takes 70 weeks for the people of God in the holy city to finish transgression and to bring everlasting righteousness. The Lord's righteousness is everlasting. Psalm 119, 142 Your righteousness is everlasting and your law is true. This verse is encouraging the people of God to be righteous like Jesus Christ by putting an end to sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity in the period of 70 weeks or 490 days or 1 year and 4 months. During the 70 weeks, the vision and prophecy will be sealed up. Daniel 12.4 But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll unto the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. It means the word of the scroll must be sealed until the time of the end. Many will seek meaning about it by going here and there to increase knowledge. There are many misinterpretations about this verse when it is very direct and upfront with no complicated meaning behind it. We should not further complicate the word of God or add pointless meaning to it because it is written. 
Revelation 22, 18-19 I warn everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add the, to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. Daniel 9.24 Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring an everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. During the seventy weeks, God will anoint the most holy. Who is the most holy? Isaiah 6, 3, And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The Lord of hosts is the most holy of holy, and the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. Psalm 24, 10, Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Who is this King of glory? 1 Corinthians 2, 8, None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The King of glory was crucified. Who was crucified? Matthew 28, 5. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. During the 70 weeks, God will anoint Jesus Christ. To anoint means to bless or to give power. God will put His Spirit in Jesus to do something during this time. Luke 4.18 The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. Daniel 9.25 Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, from the time God commanded unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks then Jerusalem will be rebuilt even during troubling times. What is Jerusalem in this verse? And why does it need to be restored? Every time a question pops up, let us find the answer in the Word of God. Don't take it from another person or the articles in the World Wide Web, especially when it doesn't have a backup or confirmations from the Scriptures. The answers are in the Bible. We just have to seek it with the Holy Spirit. What is Jerusalem? Isaiah 64.10 Thy holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. Jerusalem has become a desolation. Why? Luke 21.20 But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Jerusalem was surrounded by enemies, and the word referred to Jerusalem as her in this passage. Why would the Bible refer to a name of a city as her and not it? Let us find more Bible verses about Jerusalem to confirm what it really is and why it was referred as her. It is said her desolation is near when she is surrounded by enemies. When is she surrounded by enemies? Jeremiah 6.22 This is what the Lord says, Look, an army is coming from the land of the north. A great nation is being steered up from the ends of the earth. They are armed with bow and spear. They are cruel and show no mercy. They sound like the roaring sea as they ride on their horses. They come like men in battle formation to attack you, daughter Zion. 
This is why Jerusalem was referred to as her and not it because Jerusalem in that verse means daughter Zion. This has led to many misinterpretations that Jerusalem is a nation, a city, and a group of people in this verse. It is clearly written in the scriptures that the Jerusalem that has become desolate and was surrounded by armies is daughter Zion. Now this would lead to another question. Who is the daughter Zion? Zephaniah 3.14 Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Daughter of Zion is called Israel, and she is also called daughter of Jerusalem. What is the meaning of Israel in the Bible? Genesis 32:28. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. The meaning of Israel is the one who has struggled with God and with humans and has overcome. It means the daughter Zion or Jerusalem has struggled with God and with humans, but she has overcome. It could also mean Zion is a human who struggles with humans and with God. Let's seek more about daughter Zion, who is also daughter Jerusalem. 2 Kings 19-21 to This is the word that the Lord has spoken against him. Virgin daughter Zion despises you and mocks you. Daughter Jerusalem tosses her head as you flee. Daughter Zion or daughter Jerusalem has struggled with God and with humans and has overcome. She is also a virgin, meaning undefiled. Song of Solomon 6 9. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bear her. The daughters saw her and blessed her. Yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Now who is this daughter Zion? Isaiah 62.11 The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, See your Savior comes. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. If you have seen the previous Bible study, the Lamb's wife is the bride of Christ, this would be very familiar. Who is the Savior whose reward is with him, and who comes with recompensation? Revelation 22.12 Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. It is Jesus who is coming soon, and his reward is with him and he who comes with a compensation to each person according to what they have done. Revelation 22.16 I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Let's sum it all up, brothers and sisters in Christ. Jerusalem is referred to as her because Jerusalem is called Daughter Zion. Daughter Zion is also called Daughter Jerusalem. Daughter Zion is called Israel because she struggled with God and with man and has overcome. Daughter Zion is a virgin and undefiled. Jesus is coming for Daughter Zion. It is written that Jerusalem will be surrounded by armies and become desolate. It could also mean Daughter Zion will be surrounded by enemies and people will desert her and leave her empty. But Jesus is coming to save her from the enemies when nobody is there to help her. I hope this will clear some things up. It saddens my heart that there are so many misinterpretations about the Bible when everything is just written. It's all in the Bible. Therefore, don't take it from anyone, not even from someone like me who just studies the Bible. Take everything from the Word of God. Seek the truth by seeking God and the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Anyway, let us continue with our Bible study about Daniel 9, 24-27. We are now on verse 25. Daniel 9, 25. Know therefore and understand that from going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore, and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. 
there will be 7 weeks and 62 weeks. 3 score is translated as 60 in an IV. If there are words you cannot understand in one version, open another version and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in understanding the scriptures. 7 weeks plus 62 weeks is equal to 69 weeks, which is equal to 483 days or 1.3 years. It will take 1.3 years from the time God gives His commandment to Jesus to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the time the street shall be built again and the wall even during troublous times. This could be confusing again because we know Jerusalem is daughter Zion, but it is written streets and walls. What does this mean? Is Jerusalem a city, a woman, or a nation? Zechariah 8.3 Thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts the holy mountain. Jerusalem is indeed a city. It is the city of truth. Jerusalem is also the holy mountain. Joel 3.17 So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who dwells in Zion, my holy mountain, and Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall never again pass through it. God dwells in the Zion, which is the holy mountain. Jer Jerusalem is a holy mountain. Jerusalem is daughter Zion. Therefore, God dwells in daughter Zion. It also means God is living in her. Jeremiah 3.17 At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it. To the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. Jerusalem is the throne of the Lord. Revelation 21, 2-3 And I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. In our previous Bible study, the Lamb's wife is the bride of Christ. We have already discussed that the holy city is the bride of Christ. Jerusalem is a holy city, and at the same time a bride. God is dwelling with man through New Jerusalem. It means God is with us because God is within her as a human like Jesus Christ. Psalm 46.5 God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. I know this is something not easy to take or digest. At times like this, I pause for a moment and pray and ask for God's guidance and wisdom to help me understand these things fully. I encourage you to do the same because this revelation is something that is beyond my comprehension and ability to understand as well. However, we should finish our study on Daniel 9, 24-27. We are now already on verse 26. Daniel 9:26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. But not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Three score and two weeks. Three score means sixty two. Sevens in NIV. Sevens means weeks. Sixty two weeks plus two weeks is equal to sixty four weeks. 64 weeks is equal to 450.1 days or 1.2 years. For 1.2 years, Jesus will be cut off from Jerusalem or daughter Zion. And the people of the prince shall come and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary which is Jerusalem or daughter Zion. Now who are the people of the prince that will destroy Jerusalem? Ephesians 2.2 2. Wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The prince is the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Who are the children of disobedience? Ephesians 5, 6 Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. 
wrath of God is upon the children of disobedience. Revelations 14, 9 to 10. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their heads, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured out full strength into the cup of his wrath. The people of the prince are the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience are those who worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on their forehead or in their hand. In our previous Bible study, The Woman and the Dragon, we have studied that the beast is Satan or Lucifer. Revelation 13.1 The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming up to the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And at the end of 1.2 years that Jesus will be cut off from Jerusalem or daughter Zion shall be with a flood. Revelation 12.15 and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The water here actually represents multitudes. Revelation 17.15 Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The serpent or Satan sent multitudes of his followers, those who have the mark of the beast and those who worship him, as a flood to the woman. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river. Now let us not take things literally. What is this earth or who is this earth that, that helped the woman? Psalm 33, 5 The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. The earth is full of the Lord's unfailing love. It means the woman was helped by the Lord's unfailing love by opening its mouth. Let us not take the Bible literally again, because Jesus speaks in parables just as the word of God is only meant for those who have ear to hear or to those who have the Holy Spirit. Only then the people of God can understand these revelations. This is how the Lord helped the woman by opening his mouth. Revelations 19.15 Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. Jesus helped the woman when Satan was about to overcome her with his multitude of followers. At that time, Jesus made war against the serpent who wanted to overtake the woman. Revelations 19.11 I saw heaven open and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called White Faithful and True. With, just, with justice, he judges and wages war. Let's go back to Daniel 9.26 again to fully understand what's happening. Daniel 9.26 And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city in the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Jeremiah 12.11 They have made it desolate, and being desolate in mourneth unto me. And the whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. The people of the prince, or those who worship the beast, will make Jerusalem desolate or depressingly empty, deserted, or bare. Deserted means nobody will be there for her. She will be deserted by people. It could also mean Jerusalem or daughter Zion was devastated, destroyed, ruined, and nobody will be there for her. Nobody believed her, and she was abandoned by the people and she has mourned to God about it. The whole chapter of Lamentation 1 is about her agony during desolation. Nobody cared while she mourned to God during the times when she was desolated. I will just share verse 2 but I highly encourage reading the whole chapter to understand her situation more. Lamentation 1-2 Bitterly she weeps at night. Tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one to comfort her. All her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. 
Among all her lovers, lovers could mean even her family. Even all her friends have betrayed her and, be and have become her enemies. She has gone to the greatest oppression of all times as narrated in Lamentation 1. When it seems like the world or nobody cares, Jesus cares. Zechariah 9, 9-10 Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horses from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Zephaniah 3, 14-19 Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with, with, by his love. He will exhort over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival, so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame, and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. Jesus will come. Jesus will save. Jesus will restore. Therefore, daughter Zion or Jerusalem should rejoice and be glad in it. However, before we, re we rejoice in all these revelations, let us pause for a moment again and pray silently in our hearts to accept these truths and confirm it to God through the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name. Then we proceed to the last chapter of Daniel 9, 24-27, verse 27. He will confirm a covenant with many for one, 7. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering, and at the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Jesus confirms the covenant with many for one week or seven days. This covenant is of peace. Isaiah 54.10 Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has a compassion on you. Daniel 9.27 He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. In one week, Jesus will cause the sacrifice and oblation to pause, because he doesn't want it, but he desires to be heard. Psalm 46 Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Daniel 9.27 He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven in the middle of the seven. He will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Daniel 12.11 From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. So in the middle of the week, Jesus will set up an abomination that causes desolation, and from that time, there will be 1,290 days. What is setting up an abomination first? Jeremiah 6.15 were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush, therefore they will fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. Jesus will cast down those who desolated Jerusalem or daughter Zion. Jesus will set up an abomination to those that caused desolation to daughter Zion or Jerusalem until the end of his decree that was ordered to him by God. What are these abominations? There are seven abominations mentioned in the scriptures. 
Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, an heart that deviseth wicked, imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh the lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. God will avenge Jerusalem, who is daughter Zion. God will avenge a daughter, which means God will avenge his children. God will avenge his people. Deuteronomy 32.25 It is mine to avenge. I will repay. In due time their foot will slip. Their day of disaster is near, and their doom rushes upon them. Now for those who plan to hate me or bash me because of this Bible study, I seek not to avenge myself nor I will give time to reply to your negative feedback on my comment section or disliking my video because it is written, Romans 12.19 Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. As for my brothers and sisters in Christ, or the children of God, I hope you have learned something from this Bible study. I shared what I studied and showed how I studied the Word of God. May you seek God's guidance and the truth in everything from this world of lies. God bless you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope we will have more Bible studies in the future, and I hope to be with you more in this Anchor of Hope YouTube channel.